Welcome everybody to ESC Fan TV. It's a Sunday night, which can mean only one thing. It is Melfest Sunday, part three. That's right. Third week of Melody Festival Ireland from Sweden, and we are delighted here, the team of ESC Fan TV, to bring you the lowdown for what went down last night in Sweden. Before we get there, though, I'm going to introduce our panel, and we're going to start with my very good friend and co-host. It's Tom. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. Looking forward to going over the entries in this week's Melfest heat. Um, oh, I'm in yeah. the chat room tonight as well. So please do keep your comments coming in because I'm looking forward to talking to all of you. Yes, yes, I'm talking to you guys at home. Looking forward to talking to you. I won't put any comments from the rabble up though, don't worry. <laughs> I'm and... at my panellists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tom. And also we have Elliot on the show this evening. Hey guys, my first time talking about Sweden. I'm back from my night off last night. So, yeah, I've been drafted in last minute. So, we'll see how this goes. He loves it. And uh, from Elliot, we go to Sean. Good evening, Sean. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, nice to be back. Let's get cracking. Yay. And from Sean, we say uh, a very good evening to the one and only Mel of Melfest. Hey, can't have a mouth fest without well. Correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, this week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to get into that. And last but very much not least, you can't do a Swede show without our resident Swede. It is, of course, Stockholm's own Gustav. He's on the show. How are you doing, Gustav? <laughs> I am doing great. I'm very excited to talk about Melody Festival again. Uh, yeah, let's go. Exactly. Right, format for tonight's show. If you're new to the channel, um, firstly, make sure you give us a like or a dislike. If you hate it, that's absolutely fine too. Leave us comments and uh, most importantly, click the subscribe button on YouTube and ding-a-dong our bell. Just give that little bell, little tinkle, ting, 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 which means when we go live... <laughs> Little ting, ting, ting. I've got my strong hand. When we will give you a... <laughs> when... when uh, Let me start that bit again. When we go live, we will notify you on the app. So you get to find out. And you don't want to miss any more of this, do you? Of course you don't. Right, first song of the evening. And the format is, we're going to take you through last night's qualifiers and the ones who who certainly did not qualify. And we're gonna give you our opinions, but what's more important is your opinion. So those in the chat room, keep your comments coming through. Song one. Tribe Friday make their debut at Melody Festival Island with the song, Shut Me Up. Indie pop rock. Yeah, debut, debutants, uh, remind me a bit of the arc actually. I don't know if you remember Eurovision 2007 from Sweden. Certainly the staging hit me of uh, arc vibes. Um, yeah, performing a bit like the Ramones, Sex Pistols. Nice skirt, by the way. Um, came last with absolutely everyone last night, bar, weirdly, the 16 to 29-year-old category. Who knew? Let's start the show off with Mel. Mel, what did this, this really should be up your street, but it came dead last last night by some distance, 19 points yeah. overall. What happened? I don't think it deserved to come last. I don't think it was the worst of, of what is decidedly quite a bad bunch, but... Just felt a bit sort of, do you know, like kids bop, them CDs where people cover songs for kids. It, it were a bit like that. I just, it didn't click. I get what they were going for when they said they were going for like the Hives meets Abba, but I don't think it landed. But they seemed pretty happy with the performance. So as long as they're happy, we're happy, aren't we? Sure are. Um, Elliot, did this work for you? See, I didn't actually mind this. Like I said, it's quite Brit prop. It's you know it. We see this in the charts quite a lot. They look like they've been handpicked from Shoreditch or Brighton. I'm going to say it like they—I swear I have seen them walking down the street at university when I used to live in Brighton. Um, it was fine. It was okay. It just didn't leave a massive impression. And you know, if you're going to use the arc as a reference point, that was 15 years ago, and they didn't do that well at Eurovision. So I don't I don't think people who remember the arc thinking, hmm, this is a good idea. This type of, you know, um, Brit rock sort of like mid tempo it never does well. Like this mist just made Andre Johnson and got knocked out. And I don't think any other song sort of like it's advanced since. So I wasn't too shocked. Wasn't my last place, but I can understand why it just didn't connect with people at home. I can see why sadly. I kind of liked though, the, um, the homage to Britney Spears, baby hit me one more time going on there with the front man. Uh, Sean, did this work for you? No, 
Did it hack? <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid question. Uh, it was awful. Uh, this kind of music's not been relevant for 15, 20 years. All I've just put, I've just written down, a pound land busted. Uh, it, it just, uh, no, not my cup of tea at all. Uh, an extra point for the frock, maybe, but that's about it. And Sorry. what a frock it was. What yeah. a frock it was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good stuff. I mean, we've torn this to pieces uh, in, in just a few moments there. What were your thoughts on it? And um, why did the 16 to 29 year olds like this? I mean, they, they gave it 10 <laughs> points in the telly vote, uh, not in the telly vote, in the app vote, and everybody else gave this dead last. What went wrong? Look, let, let me tell you, the only thing I liked about this was that the little cute skirt. Uh, and that is also the only thing I remember about this. Uh, it, it is actually quite awful. And I will never, ever, ever listen to this song again. <laughs> so I'm quite happy that it went out. Uh, about the voting, I have no idea what went on with my age group. Uh, I'm a little bit embarrassed to be part of it, to be honest. It should, we should also have given it one point. Thank you, Gustav. And finally, Tom, I know this is not up your street, but I'm going to ask you anyway. I like this. Do you know what? This did not deserve last place. Last <laughs> no, place. you didn't. No, you this, didn't. This did not deserve last place. Um, I thought it was uh, a lot of fun. Um, very busted-esque. Obviously, a hint of almost like what I go to school for, if anyone's seen the video on mm. that. Um, I thought they were hard done by it. I'm going to have to say it. There were worse songs there last night. Whilst people say about, you know, one point, you know, going to them, and it was, you know, fair enough. No, it wasn't. They didn't deserve to come out with so few points last night there were other songs out there that deserved the wooden spoon i feel like um i feel this could be an interesting night actually we're just getting into it now aren't we uh, what are the chat rooms saying tom or dare i ask uh well donna actually really loved the arc and says mm. it should have done better should. Uh, lee doesn't quite get the format of melody the new format of melody fest of um Thomas reckons it was this week's school band, which I suppose does seem to be a bit like rent a band week uh, at Melfest at the moment. Amir wonders if uh, Gustav was trying to see under the skirt. Jude is more interested in looking at, is that noodles you've got behind you, Sean? No, it's Tomo. Is it Tomo? If you're in the show. Oh. It could go. Oh, that's not fair. Jeez, oh, look, sorry, buddy. Come on. Looking at that. Oh, um, nice. And then also, Martin's like, what I go to school for. What a classic. Keep your comments coming in, guys. Thank you, Tom. It's coming to something, isn't it, when the dog's the eye candy on the show. Right. Song two. Lancelot with the song Lickety Slut. <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> Was that what? some laughing I heard just there? <laughs> Sorry. Lickety Slut by Lancelot. Swedish reality TV star Lancelot makes his Melody Festival and debut, people. Debut. Absolutely debut. Um, yeah. Previously, he's actually a dance music expert. This was definitely not his standard genre, let me tell you. Dreamy pop ballad. Quite likeable, but absolutely and completely forgettable. What do we think about this one? Let's start with you, Elliot. And, and I have to come to you first, just to give Gustav five minutes to get over my butchering of his language once again. <laughs> I mean, I was also laughing when my mic was on mute, I'd like that. <laughs> um, yeah, just to, there was very little, I had to watch this today because I was busy last night. And there was very little I remember about this performance, and I probably saw it three hours ago. Um, it's just your standard. It reminds me of Teflon. It's there goes in, leaves no impression whatsoever. Like, it just went, went started, ended, couldn't remember it literally two songs later. And now I've just seen the pictures, what's it, what is he wearing as a shirt? It looks like a cross stitch, just put on a shirt. Like, what is that? What? Why is so many people wearing beige and weird colors in Melfest this year? What, what is with that? But uh, I, don't, I don't think it was a bad song by any stretch of imagination. It was just horrifically forgettable, and that's its problem. Yeah, it was so I, I... forgettable. I agree with you. I actually think the song's really cool. I like the song, and I've listened to it a couple of times today, and I like the shirt as well, by the way. I think I might have that in some form. Um, of course but, you do. 
But I think the problem is the staging was very bland, very beige. And um, I think a song like that needed something far, far better to hashtag elevate it. What did you think, Sean? Yeah, I kind of agree about the staging. It was dull. And in general, that this whole heat was dull. But I mean, I'm just wondering if we're, we're suffering a bit due to the lack of a certain Mr. Bjorkman now. Um, you know, he's gone. Is that what Melfest is missing? Um, I don't know. Um, now, this song itself, I understand that they've got to have a variety of acts in there for balance, but this was, it, it was just dull. Apart from being able to snigger at the translation of the, well, not the translation of the title, but the uh, the title in English, there's nothing much really to go about it. Um, lick, lick, uh, go on, lick, 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 slut. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I can't say it. But, slut, uh, it, slut. Slut. Okay, it's just if you go around lickly sluts, you'll you'll probably get a happy ending, which is what it actually means. <laughs> Apparently, uh, happy ending. No, uh, uh, oh, it was just a bit of a yawn fest, wasn't it? Um, it was a tea break. Uh, yeah. which, but it's the second song and you don't really want a tea break, do you? I think this is another song I think I'll probably listen to time and time again, but it just didn't work. Um, a bit like Samara, Samira Man- Manners last week. I thought her song was stunning, but it just it just didn't it just didn't come across right on stage. Um, mm. You know, when you're comparing all these wacky and wild and wonderful songs, which we're going to talk about, by the way, because there was a lot of wacky last night. Uh, yeah. Mel, Mel, what did you make of this one? Um, I honestly can't even remember how the song goes. He's cute, though, I guess. It's just a bit of a non-event, wasn't it? Nothing. Just nothing. If he's into dance music, why didn't he do that? Because it really lacked like any sort of banger last night, and he would have stood out. But just bland. Thank you, Mel. Gustav. Yes. Are you a fan of a lickety slap? <laughs> <laughs> why did you have to say that? Uh, I was getting ready to have a moment here and now you just ruined everything um you have your moment my love <laughs> i am in love with the lyrics of this song uh, and i know that none of you can understand it uh, so it's understandable that you are as negative as you are even if i don't appreciate it uh, <laughs> the lyrics of this song is so strong and it it's so beautiful uh, he's he's singing about not daring to believe in anything beautiful in his life because he, he knows that everything that is beautiful has to come to an end and the lyrics just spoke to me so so much last night and i have been listening to this song a lot today i get why it didn't go anywhere in the in the contest but this is by far one of the best songs in the contest Thank you, Gustav. Finally, a positive comment. Wow. <laughs> it's only taken 15 minutes. Tom, your turn. You're on mute. <laughs> Didn't want to finish on a high then. Uh, so, um, this was my bottom placed song last night. Um, I didn't understand what the song was about, obviously. Um, a few things to kind of raise from it. Um, some Melfest debutants go in and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. They're doing brilliantly. It's their first time. Wow, I never knew. Other Melfest debutants go into Melfest and you're like, it is really your first time, isn't it? I can totally tell that is your first time. Nice laundered shirt from his mum, little bit indie. Harry Styles-esque tattoos on the arms just saying um it was a nice enough ballad um but then this is part of the problem that i'm finding with melfest this year is that i think in some ways he was hard done by and i think he was hard done by by the running order because in actual fact i think the arrangement of some of these songs and where they're being placed this year i would have totally had those songs in a massively different order last night because mm. I did think it was a tale of two halves really um, when it came to it and I think they could have been arranged a lot better and um, which would have made it a lot more pleasing and I think maybe Sean is right when he says that we're suffering without having Krista Bjorkman there 
um, steadying the ship. Um, I do hope, however, Lancelot does come back um, with another song uh, next year um, that is better and something that he likes as well. And I hope that he does get a better placing. But alas, last night, this was the one I gave my wooden spoon to. I'm going to finish this off by saying I like the song. I like I like the melody to it. But actually, I, I've got this theory he might come back. And he'll come back and, and kind of do what uh, the ammo's just done and uh, what in, uh, what Benjamin Ingrosso did a few years ago. Come back with an absolute bop that we're going to love. Because that's his former genre when he was a part of a duo, Lance and Linton. So maybe we'll see that from Lance a lot. Great vocal, by the way. Actually, just let's end on a high. I thought his vocal was one of the best of the night. Go and listen to it back. He's on point vocally. But there you go. There's There is your second song of the night. The sixth place entry, 35 points. Our next entry, of course, came fifth, but only beat Lancelot by two points. It is Linda Bensing. Linda Bensing is back. Um, you won't be surprised to learn that this, one of the songwriters is Thomas Gearson. Of course it is. Of course it is. She's a familiar face to Melfest viewers over the years. Uh, she... Um, she last competed in 2020, but quite honestly, I think she's been doing it since God was a boy. She's been around for decades. And, and to be honest, if you hadn't listened to the song, or if you haven't listened to the song even still now, I think you can pretty much guess what kind of entry it would have been from Linda Bensick last night. Incredibly catchy. <sighs> Explosion of colours on stage. Exactly what you care to expect from Linda Bensick. So let me start with Gustav. Gustav, were you a fan of Linda's furry dick? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't want to say yes because of how, how you asked that question, but yes. <laughs> um, look, I, I love Linda uh, as everyone my age does because, you know, we grew up with her music. Uh, we grew up with her melody festival and entries like Alla Flickor and Yo Yugi Subra. And those were the songs that we, when we, we had them as, a, as children and when we grew up, we started parking to them and dancing to them and, you know, all that stuff. And she's just, she's just been a part of our lives forever and you will have a soft spot for her. Uh, I think this was one of her better entries in later years and mm. I got. I might have gotten super stressed by her running around like, like crazy. Uh, but in the end, I was smiling, and that's what she's there for. Thank you very much, Gustav. And just pronounce it for me properly. It's not furry dick. It is, in fact, Fierfaldit Hura. There you go. I was very, very close, as you can tell. Thank you very much for correcting me, Gustav. Um, Elliot, weirdly. This came last with everybody except the three to nine year olds who gave it 10 points out of nowhere. What happened? It was bright and neon, that's why. <laughs> that's literally it, because you saw who won that three to nine, same thing. Um, yeah, um, I hated this. This was my last place. I know Gustav loves Belinda Bensing, and she's like Swedish Melody Festival and royalty. But the whole time I was listening to this performance and song, and her running around, I was just thinking of Fala from Christa Siegfried a few years prior and said, give her this song and she would nail it and go straight through. Linda, I remember back in that 2020 show, because Mel and I were on it and said she is a bit like the mum from Mean Girls dancing around. And I kind of get what Mel means now, because, oh my God, it was like the mum from Mean Girls just stole the microphone and ran around for three minutes. <laughs> like, pretty sure she fell over at one point or nearly did. There was one point she just stopped singing and let the backing track do it because she was knackered. <laughs> Like, I admire her energy and be able to do that because I couldn't. But this was a mess. It was too energetic. It was too busy. Of course, you can tell Thomas Gearson, Gearson has wrote this. I just think, like, I'm I'm not with Gustav. I'm over Linda Bensing. She comes back every, like, she's, a, she's like with um some of the others who just live in the SVT warehouse and they just wheel her out. I think it's time that she just bows out with dignity and grace and not in a giant neon orange tutu frock personally because it's the same result she do keeps getting sick slash fifth and it's just no sorry was not a fan of this at all sorry i wanted to be but no <laughs> you are right there is a t there is a time when a, a 
Melody Festival and performer realizes that their time is up and uh, they, they just can't pass that fifth or sixth placing. And it looks like that's the case here for, uh, for Linda Bensing. Um, she has one genre in Melfest, and I think the only way you can really describe that is hot mess. Um, but on the other hand, she looks fantastic for 47 years of age. And I would be the first one to go on a night out with her because I imagine she'd drink me under the table. Mel, were you a fan of this? I'm not. I I'm not sure what happened. It was just chaos, wasn't it? It's just absolute <laughs> chaos. Just running around like she's at a rock concert, getting out of breath, hugging people. So that was going on. In a sense, that made it quite entertaining, to be fair. But I don't know. She needs to give it up as a bad job now. I think she was definitely giving off the "I'm a cool mom" vibes again. But I liked the colours. There was, there was a lot of colour going on on stage. I must admit, I, I think if you just turned on and you had no idea what you were watching, you would have been like, whoa, am I on something? <laughs> Can I have more of it, please? <laughs> just mental. Thank you, Mel. Um, sure, this must have been, must have been up your street. You love a bit <laughs> of schlager. Tell me why you love this so much. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I just wrote, I just wrote Daffock. Uh, because what the hell was that? I mean, she nearly danced out of herself out of her frock at the beginning. Parts of it fell off. The, the the dress itself looked like you know one of those those frilly toilet roll holders you see in old ladies' bathrooms. It looked like one of the things you put on top of the toilet rolls. Uh, oh, look, it was bright. It was colourful. It was full of energy. It did have me smiling from ear to ear. Uh, yeah, I like my schlager, but this it wasn't good was it it was a bit of a car crash bless um so yeah such a shame she needs to uh yeah she needs to hang it up now definitely well, thank you sean I, I know a man who disagrees entirely and felt that this was possibly a direct till and contender last night it's your time tom and you know you put yourself in that position to defend us now so over to you the pathway is clear Oh, do you know what? I wouldn't have had her as a, a direct final, but I think she at least deserved a uh, chance to go through to the second chance round, especially given some of the crap that ended up in it. So there was more energy on stage in her three minutes than we'd seen in the five acts that had preceded her. Um, she actually looked like she wanted to be there. She had more stage presence. She had more charisma. It was catchy. It was fun. It was absolutely, totally delightful. This was a lesson in stage and divaship that basically any uh, of the Melfest greats could deliver. This was amazing. And do you know what? I think the final is actually poorer for not having her in that second chance round. Um, I think that, you know, I, there was some pretty dreary crap out there, wasn't there? And she was totally different. It was a total juxtaposition and she totally deserved better uh, than the placing she got last night. Um, and as for this whole idea that once you get to a certain age, you know, you're past it and stuff, can we just, you know, emphasize the fact that, you know, Eva and Ava have probably a few years on her and yet they still managed to make the second chance round last year. Can I just say, I never said it was because she was too old. It's because ever she really? has not got past that first round of voting yeah, yeah. since she went direct to Fanal nine years ago. Her last yeah. entry, she's from seventh, seventh, fifth. That's why she needs to stop. The public don't care about her. That's what I yeah. mean. But you, the thing is, you keep on, you keep on trying. I think you know it's. It was brilliant. I liked it. I thought she was hard done by, but I think to be fair. She gave a performance, and I think some other of the, some other acts actually phoned them in last night. There you go. And that's why we love you, Tom, because you're a man for diversity. And uh, this song was down your street and up your alley and all that malarkey. What did the chat room have to say? Well, apparently, I'm probably <laughs> on the grass. Just saying that. But Lee, can, can I just stop, stop you one second, Tom? Go, go back to that comment, please. Okay, if you wear that dress in the same way I did for, I will give you whatever money you want towards your ch the charity of your choice, but it has to be in the same genre as what I did last year. 
What do we uh, think, panel? Yeah, I'll contact Joe now to make the ruffled skirt. <laughs> Travel it. Travel it. Oh, you know you need a bit of tool. It won't even be expensive. Thomas wanted, for Thomas wanted you in the dress to begin with. <laughs> he's changed his mind, though, bless him. <laughs> so, he's, got, he's got wind of, you know, a slight inkling you might be willing to do it, Tom. So it's all on you now, I'm afraid. No, no. And then, uh, Anita thinks that, you know, orange is definitely your colour. So obviously <laughs> It's not. Very... It clashes with me ginger hair and ginger beard, love. <laughs> anyway, the general view in the chat room um, is very much that it was catchy, it was fun, Lee liked it there. Um, Martin thought, you know, in terms of the rehearsal snippet, it was the best one there. Anita mm. thought it was too much more screaming than singing. Donna said, you know, she put up a lot of crazy energy, colourful energy, not the worst song I've heard, but not really my cup of tea. But you know what? Gustav was the one that summed it up um, the best. It made you smile. And that's the important thing. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And if that wasn't enough colour for you, the song that actually did go to the second chance or the semi-final, as Sweden are now call it, is Kazi Opea with the song I Can't Get Enough. Singer-songwriter Kazi Opea makes her Melody Festival and debut this year. Um, she's actually written for various international artists, including a number of K-pop, K-pop superstars, including BTS. This, um, this was another explosion on stage it was like someone had thrown a bag of skittles onto the stage and they'd exploded in the background um i love what she was wearing perhaps it looks like she's looking a little bit like dolly styles mum let's find out what the panel thought uh, let's go to elliot because he looks absolutely mortified what did you think of this this was very icona pop wasn't it you just had to get Dolly Style in this bloody show, didn't you? And I knew no, it had to happen. Something you were going to mention every Dolly year. Melfest no once. <laughs> See, I actually like this song. I've listened to it a lot today. It's it's quite cool. It's quite current. She reminds me a lot of Marina. I like Marina the Diamonds. It's definitely something she could release. I've seen some people compare it to Ava Max. Wouldn't go that far, but I can see the similarity. The lyrics are a. I mean, I do love the opening lyrics. Like I'm the first to admit, I've got issues. Same. Um, but yeah, I actually really like this. I would have had this go straight to the final. I think it was fun. It was kind of thought the staging was a bit, she was fine and what she was doing was fine. But the backing dancers, which looked like they were from, they just come from Zumba made no sense. And I think that's what let it down. There was definitely a vision in her head, which she and the LEDs hit, but the backing dancers didn't. So it seemed a slight weird kids TV sort of weird vibe. And she's singing about you know, loving someone the way that she does and being an addict. And clearly three to nine year olds don't listen to the lyrics, otherwise she wouldn't have won that age group, but it was bright and colorful, so that's why she did. Um, I like the song, I think I could see it in the final. She's a decent singer, to be fair. And yeah, it was a fun three minutes for a debut, quite fun. And it was nice to see Paul Ray on a song which has a pulse, unlike his own entries. Oh. So I had to get that in there. You, wow. Me and Tom don't like Paul Ray, so we don't, look, come on up. I'm surprised I enjoyed this when I saw his name come up on the, the songwriters. Well, it's not a standard type of entry, let's be honest. Um, by the way, people, this actually finished 30 points ahead of Linda Bensing's entry. Uh, so it really wasn't close uh, between the bottom three and the rest. Um, I got shades of Depeche Mode in this. I know the song I Can't, uh, Can't Get Enough was Depeche Mode's entry, that entry hit from many a year ago. But I actually can hear Depeche Road through this. Sean, you looked uh, surprised when I said that. What did you make of this? Can you see any Depeche Mode? No. Uh, <laughs> but, um, Elliot, oh, gosh. Right. Sorry, your comment about Paul Ray just riled me a bit because I, I, I love him and I love his songs. And he's got, a, if you listen to his stuff on Spotify, there's some great songs there. Uh, and yeah, it was co wrote by Paul Ray. Uh, I thought it was really catchy. Really catchy, good strong vocals, uh, bright and colourful. I didn't like what she was wearing. Look, you know, she looked a bit of a tip, but I'm sure they can sort that out. Um, yeah, I, I really, really like this song. Um, it was one of the highlights of the night for me in a, a rather, a rather dull week. But yeah, it was pretty, pretty good. I really enjoyed it. I saw the sparkles. <laughs> Thank you, Sorry. Sean. Uh, Tom, I'll get off Sparkles. Oh, Tom has just tried to mount Sparkles. Sorry. 
When you said Sparkles, I thought that was uh, Tom's new drag name. Anyway, Mel, was this a worthy qualifier, do you think? Yeah, I would have put this DTF, to be honest. It was one of the best ones of the night. I thought it was really fun. You could tell there was a lot of K-pop influence in it. Mm. It was cute. It's like bubble gum. And... Yeah, I didn't mind it at all. It kind of went downhill from there after it being the first song. So... Yeah. It was a good opener, actually, wasn't it? I mean, if you can have an opener, yeah. this was probably the one to to, uh, to open the show. Um, yeah, Gustav, out of that one, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Gustav, um, does, do you think this has a chance of qualifying from the semi-final in a few weeks' time? I mean, it's it's definitely got something different about it. I mean, I, I think as a song, it's quite generic, but I think she delivers it really well. Does it stand a chance for you? You know what, I... I think this is a very, very fun and catchy song. And I think a song like this is needed in the final from a female singer after what we have seen so far in the contest. Uh, so I would not at all be surprised if it qualifies from the semifinal. Uh, but you know, since I cannot see this winning Melody Festival and she can take a side gig as Sub Wolfer's background dancer because her mouth is huge. And, you know, when I noticed that, I couldn't see anything else. But except that, I really like this. Yeah, I liked it too, actually. Thank you very much. And Tom, this, um, given what you've just said about Linda Bensing, this finished 30 points higher. So there was really no contest there. Was it justified to you? I didn't like it. Sorry. I've kind of reevaluated my opinion slightly on Listen Back Again today, but I didn't like it. Reminded of Morticia Adams in the Adams Family Values. All I can forgive, but really, pastels? I thought the staging was shit. I hated it. It was like they dressed up in their pajamas. No effort whatsoever, and those frilly armbands made her look like a budget price Montaigne from Australia 2020. I thought, you know, in hindsight, basically, the song probably deserved better. But that staging was shocking. And I'd shoot the stage designer if I was her. I'd certainly sack them because that was appalling. Um, I'll be honest, I would have sent it home last night. I would have put Lenda Bensing through instead. Sorry, not Tom's for me. Tom's sacking a lot of stage designers in Sweden, I've noticed this year. Well, if they like... got their staging right, quite frankly, there wouldn't be a problem. But quite frankly, even a five-year-old could probably design staging better than that. Thank there you, Tom. You Thank you. And what are the chat rooms saying? Because I think they're a lot more positive than perhaps the panel are on this particular entry. What are they saying? Well, Jeanette says, You go, Tom! And Martin says, Tom is normally the calm one on the show. But aside from this, there is some positivity. Uh, Matt loved Cassie. Uh, Georgia reckoned it was the uh, favourite of the night. Mm. Um, catchy and fun. And Amir loved the male dancers. Uh, Erwin was like more like a Euro pop song good for Eurovision. Um, and then finally Jeanette said, too much bubblegum and Disney, awful staging, but the song wasn't that bad. No, the song wasn't bad at all. The song wasn't bad. Yeah. I don't think it was particularly remarkable, but um, it's not a bad song. It's not a bad song. And I think the trouble is, it was probably one of the better songs in a pretty average heat. And in a, in a better heat, I don't think that it goes anywhere near qualifying for the second stage. I think that's the issue. Right, let's oh, move no, on. It's robbed. What was robbed? If Omar had been in this semi-final, he'd have been through. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Right, let's move on to uh, to Lisa Miskowski's Best to Come. Been a while since we've seen her, actually. Back in 2012 with the song Why Start a Fire, which I loved, by the way. I think she's a phenomenal singer and performer. Um, it actually finished ninth in the uh, the grand final of 2012. And we, we know who Sweden selected that year and it, their Eurovision went rather well. Um, this was... This is a very uplifting song. I love the backing or the back lot, um, the backdrop on this. The, the sort of train station set I thought was fantastic. And actually, quite realistic at times. Very, very popular with everyone aged 45 years plus. She got 12 points three times up to the age of 75. It's clearly something about Lisa from the 45 year plus age group. Um, so let's, uh, let's start with a 45 year plus. Uh, sorry to out you, Sean, but you go up first. How dare you? <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> I agree with the staging though, definitely the best staging of the night. 
um, yeah, a, a subway station, and people walking past going on skateboards and this, that, and the other. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. It's a good staging. It was, it was a decent song. Yeah. Uh, but when she was singing, but I still believe the best is still to come. I'm hoping she would be referring to next week's manifest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it was all right. I can see why it got through to the semi. Yeah, yeah I, I had this as a direct qualifier, actually. I thought this was one of the better songs of the night. I think she's a phenomenal singer. Um, Gustav, this uh, this worked for me. I thought it was a really good song. She reminds me a lot of Saluna Samai from Denmark 2000, and also 2012. I really like that song from uh, from Denmark then. But I, I can grow to love this one. I think this could be, for me, one of the songs that has a chance to qualify for the final. What did you think? I absolutely love this. Um I love this kind of music. This is what I listen to uh, when I get to choose for myself and my husband is not choosing the music we play in the house. <laughs> um, and I, I loved the staging. I think it was uh, stunning, actually, uh, and a mm. lot of fun. You didn't really know where to, what to watch for, but it was fun. Uh, and I will always have a soft spot for Lisa Miskowski because why Start a Fire is one of my all-time favorite Melody Festival and songs as well. Yeah. You and me are um, definitely channeling some sort of energy this season, aren't we? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, Mel, I thought this was... I thought this was really good. I really like this. And I like her as well. And I think she's one of the best vocals of the night. What did you think? I thought it was so boring. Oh, my God, I hate it. It's so dull. It was like a bad Cheryl Crow impersonator. And the staging just did my head in. I just didn't like any of it. It was my worst of the night. I just, I don't get it. I don't understand why people like it. He's so bland. Well, in fairness, you're not in the right age group. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm not yet, technically, but I liked it. But thank you, Mel. Um, Elliot, I think this was a standout. And I, I think it, it worked. I think a, a good combination of staging with vocal um, with decent song. What did you think? Yeah, it wasn't bad. But if we say we're going on the age groups, my age group was the one that sunk this song because mm. she only lost out to the winner by four points. And mm. our age group put the winner 12 and this one won. So we sunk this into the semi final. So sorry but I preferred the song that went through. Um, didn't mind it. I love Lisa as well. Like I love her song, um, Still Alive, from years ago. I mean, like 2008, that song came out. And she's a brilliant singer. And yes, Martin, I did enjoy the hat as well. And, you know, I did like the sort of like country vibe. Didn't get why I was in the train station, but I guess it kind of like, I guess I kind of went with like, it just felt like a busker almost, and she was performing in the train station. So it kind of all made sense. Didn't make sense to the lyrics for me, but, She's a decent singer. Uh, this will definitely go through to the final because I think of the six songs we've got in that semi-final, it is the strongest and she is the strongest singer. And so, and she was that close to qualifying. I can't really see a situation where she's not going to qualify because she's clearly got the support from all the age groups, bar mine. But, you know, like I said, the, the winner normally in the last two weeks has walked it, whereas this week it was very close. She just missed out. So I can't see her not making the final. Won't have any impact in the final, I feel like, but decent singer, and she deserves to be in that final. I enjoyed it, but just didn't stand out enough for me to put it in my top two, I think. Thank you, Elliot. Thank you, Elliot. And um, and finally, Tom, what did you think? Oh, this was amazing. This was close to being my top song of the night. Mm. Um, I had this in second place. Um, I thought the lyrics of this were absolutely beautiful, um, and they kind of really spoke to me as well. Um, I thought she gave an absolutely standout performance. Um, absolutely brilliant loved every moment of it um, and I do think the best is to come for her as well um, because I do think she does and I do agree with Elliot that I do think she'll make it through to the final um, and she deserves that place in the final of this year's Melody Festival and um, it'll be great to see her there as well um, absolutely fabulous it was just a shame she didn't go direct to the final that was the one thing I would have altered amongst other things from last night, is I would have sent her directly through to the final um, because I think the song the song deserved it. Thank you, Tom. Um, to be honest, between 
between uh, Kazuo Paya's song and uh, Faith Kakembo's song, there isn't really that much in it. Yeah, when you look at the points, there's uh, there's what uh, twelve points in it. It's nothing. You know, it really was very, very close last night. Talking of which, let's move on to the second. Uh, well, let's move on to one of the qualifiers, Faith Kikembo's Freedom. Um, <laughs> welcome back, Laurel Barker. You've made it back to Melody Festival Island. Um, Faith returns to Melody Festival Island after a debut it lost uh, 2020 with Crying Rivers, which was amazing, by the way. Um, yeah, first got a break in 2019 in the radio song contest P4 Nasta in Sweden. This, for me, was channeling Tusa Voices vibes from last year. I, I found myself comparing it based on staging, based on outfit, a bit for a lady, not a man, um, and backdrop. I thought there were so many similarities to me. Um, Gustav, you're shaking your head, so let, let me come to you first. I liked it. I thought it was nice. I thought it was a good song. She delivers it vocally incredibly. But I have to admit, I'm struggling to see it as a direct qualifier. What's your thoughts? Basically, I uh, I agree with everything you just said. Um, I think it's she she slayed the song. She sang it really, really, really well, uh, and I liked it. And after she was performing, I was like, well, this can actually go quite well. But I thought it would have it would go to the semi final, not the final. Um, but however, I have one big problem with this. You cannot, and let me repeat that, you cannot wear, wear a, such a fabulous, stunning dress, and then not wearing sh not wear shoes. It's no, you cannot do that. Uh, except that it was great. Thank you, Gustav. Well, this was popular with just about every age group. The 10 to 44-year-olds gave it their 12 points in the second round of voting. And the 45 to 75-plus age group gave it their 10s. So this was incredibly popular. Um, Elliot, you were a massive fan of Faith back in 2020. I knew you said 2021 earlier. It's amazing what happens when you've got a pandemic in the middle of it. You forget all years. But... <coughs> She was phenomenal with Crying Rivers. Again, great vocally. What did you make of her performance? I love this song and I love Faith Kakembo. Like I said, in 2020, she was robbed then purely because she lost out to a bigger name with a weaker mm. song because she was a newcomer. She has earned that spot last night. And I see a lot of people comparing it to Tusse. And I'm just going to say this as a person of colour. It's because the message is still relevant. It's still relevant and it will forever be relevant. And I think I get what Gusta's saying is a bit weird about her being barefoot but again it's powerful the fact she's singing in her natural short black hair is powerful i don't care that it reminds people of Tissa and voices i think it's important because again like i said it just re-impacts that message and keeps going and given like in a vt in an interview she's the shy timid woman who didn't know really how to react to anything she comes alive on stage and she sings her heart out and that's what i love about her her voice bar cornelia is the best we've heard in this competition so far second to none do i think this song is going to do anything in the final not massively because it's similar to Tusa. i don't see this as a winner but i am happy she's made the final because she deserves it i like i said i love faith kakembo i'm so happy she's given a second chance and this song is stunning i mean the only downside for me is the fact laurel barker's on it because i thought we'd escape laurel barker this year <laughs> from Belfast, to be honest but she's back <laughs> but there's no escaping laurel barker no there escape. isn't but, you know, like I said, if you want to like talk about freedom, someone having a tough two years through the pandemic, you know, she's a nurse. No one has gone through hardship more than her. she has these last two years. And the fact she gets her moment on stage and she gets to advance directly to the final, I'm thrilled for her. I, I want her to be, do so well in the final. Like, I love this woman. And like I said, the message is forever going to be important on voices and freedom. So compare it to two, so all you want, it's a good thing. Thank you, Elliot. And well said. The only thing I would say, though, is there's only 12 points difference between this song and um, and and uh, I Can't Get Enough. And I'm just wondering whether that is a that is a point towards this being a song that does OK in the final and just about enough, you know, to maybe take this middling. I can't necessarily see this being one that, will, you know, challenges for the win. Uh, Sean. Oh, yeah. It's going to get eighth in the final, but I don't care. <laughs> but you like it, and that's the main thing. 
And that's what music's all about at the end of the day. Tonight, Elliot is the preacher. Yes, he is, Amir. Thank you for putting that comment up. Sean, this um, this definitely had me entertained and I, I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. When she, and I love her as a performer. I think she's amazing. Was the sort for you, given that there's only four points in second and third last night, it could have been either Lisa, it could have been either, it could have been Faith. Did Sweden make the right choice? Um, ooh, yeah, I think so. Um, she's a brilliant performer. She's got a, a stunning voice. I love the frock. Um, I think it's just as strong as Crime Rivers from a couple of years ago. It's a great song and it's a great message. Again, yeah, similar message to Tusa and uh, it's a really important message. Like Elliot said, it'll always be relevant. And when I was in Malmo a few weeks, equality is massive over in Sweden at the moment. The message, the stickers in the windows of the shops, the LGBTQ flag stickers saying you're included. And it's it's just everywhere. Um, so, you know, not just a race issue, but, uh, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think this is a great song. It will do really well in the final. It might even win it. Um, I think the last three Melfest entries have been by, if you think about it, Melfest winners have been acts of people of, you know, people of colour. Um, and that's certainly resonating, obviously, with the Swedish public, the message behind it. And I think it's really important that it, it keeps going. I think it'll do really, really well in the final. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it deserves its place there, definitely. Thank you, Sean. Mel? Yeah. Do you agree? And what did you make of this? I do. This was my favourite of the night. Like, she's just such a nice person. I don't think it could have happened to a nicer person to get DTF. Like, she deserves it. She really deserves it. And she's got such a beautiful voice. I don't think this song is as strong as Crying Rivers was, but it shows that her popularity's increased since she was last in it. And I don't think she's going to win this year with it, but. If she comes back with the right song that properly showcases it, she has every chance to. And yeah, I thought I thought she was great. That she looked beautiful. I, I can understand the comparisons to Tusa with the staging, but I see her as an individual as well. So I think it's it's nice for her to to actually get through and know that people believe in it. Thank so, you, yeah. Mel. Well, go said. faith. <laughs> go faith, Tom. What is your what are your take on this song and what are the chat rooms saying should faith have qualified over lisa well let's let's take a look at the chat room uh, to begin with vanya says faith was robbed a few years ago she deserved this redemption uh thomas says she's a far better singer than tusa um i can see why people are comparing her to tusa but i possibly wouldn't put this directly through greatly performance great performance though um We've also got this is sleek and elegant, simply beautiful and important song. Uh, ESC when it's serious for me, the potential winner. Never mind the two of similarity. Um, this was all right. I kind of, you know what? It goes back to staging. I have such a bugbear with the staging of Melfest this year. I really do, because this was an important message, but I thought the staging lacked the impact it needed. Um, I thought it was an okay song. Would I have put it through? as a direct final qualifier yeah possibly possibly maybe does it definitely deserve to progress further absolutely um great singer lovely voice uh very enjoyable um i just think that she's gonna need to up her game if she's to actually do anything in the final because i think you're very right when you say there was 12 points between i can't get enough you know best to come and this one um, and I think she is going to need to do something um, to make it stand out more um, when it goes through to the final in a few weeks' time. Thank you, Tom. Okay, people, one final song to talk about. It's the the direct qualifier, the one that won it all. It's Anders Bagger with the song Bigger Than the Universe. Anders had a hand in writing this song himself, along with uh, former Melfest alumni Jimmy Jansen or Jimmy Jansen and of course Thomas Gearson is uh, never too far away from a Melody Festival and song uh, phenomenal vocal first of all from uh, from Anders Bagger who if you didn't know is actually one of the judges on Sweden Swedish Idol um, but it is his debut 
He is making his debut at Melfest this year. Um, and he was also featured on The Masked Singer uh, this year as well. Very kind of gospel pop, I would call it, from Anders. Uh, I loved it personally. I thought it was really good. Um, it's a bit sickly sweet, uh, certainly lyrically, but I think the, the melody is phenomenal. He delivers a stunning vocal. I'd go as far as to say he is the best vocalist we've seen in Melody Festival in this year. But I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get my, um, Gustav's view on it in a minute. And, and great backdrop of, uh, of something in Sweden, I'm, su- I'm sure, because I'm not sure, I c- sure what that was we were seeing. Certainly a mountain range. And I think if you look very carefully, you'll probably see a number of bears in the background. Talking of bears, let's go and have a conversation with Gustav. Gustav, <laughs> were you a fan of this? I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. Um, and it, that's, it's not only because Anders is a um, very, very, very famous Swede. It's... I, I like the melody of the song. I like the song. Um, and I think it was so sweet. And my my heart was just like, it got bigger because it was so sweet. And I kind of just wanted to hug him. Uh, because it's a very well, well known fact in Sweden that he has uh, stage fright. And he, he, he has never been singing on, on for people uh, before masked singer, and he didn't think that uh, that people would approve of his uh, of his singing, so he was afraid to do it, you know. Uh, so, so it was such a big moment for him, and I'm so happy for him. Thank you, Gustav. I, I this is the only song, by the way, that I listened to about three or four four times. I thought it was really, really good. Um, Sean, what are your thoughts on this one? And could did you think this was a rightful direct qualifier last night? Yes. Thank God for this song. It was, oh, I just thought it was epic. Uh, the whole production as well with, you know, uh, the graphics in the background of the display. I just thought it was, it was, it was a big effort put into that. Uh, epic song, epic voice, epic performance epic staging. I know there wasn't much to the staging, but I thought that graphically behind him, it really added to the performance. There's something very great a showman feel about the whole thing. It was, yeah. it was, it was really, really big. Um, I mean, yeah, some of the lyrics are quite lazy and cliched, you know, we're dancing on the edge, we're wild and free, my heart's beating like a symphony. It's just a bit, you know, but I just, all in all, the whole thing, the whole kaboom, definitely the best song of the night. Probably the best one of Melfest so far this year, I think. Mm. Um, do you not think so? Well, I do, so there. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, uh, and he's a great songwriter as well. He's written for Westlife and Janet Jackson, Celine Dion, Anastasia. The, the list goes on. Big, big people, these artists he's wrote for in the past as well. Um, I think this will do really, really well in the final, really well. Thank you, Sean. I agree with you. I have to say, I think... Liamu's definitely had something last week. This has got something else. And and I think if the wider age groups want something that appeals to, to everything or to every age group, this could be the song Sweden chooses to send to Eurovision this year. Uh, Mel, I think this won the semi-final by an absolute country mile. What were your thoughts? Yeah, it won it fair and square, didn't it, really? He's, he's got a great voice. It really reminded me of, is it um, Martin Almgren? A bit of lullaby. He's kind of yeah. got like that kind of vibe from a few years ago. I think he'll do really well. And if he's like a judge on Idol, he's obviously very popular with people. I think he'll place well. Um, it's Like you say, it's, it's something a bit different compared to like your Liamo bangers and a ballad. It's got a good in-between vibe. Um, yeah, I, th- I liked it, and he's got a great voice. Oh, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I just wonder, I don't know how Sweden are going to run the final in terms of votes, but presumably they're going to apply the same logic with the app. And and if they if they do, I think this appeals to almost every age group, whereas some of the others perhaps don't. And that's why I think this could be an outsider to win Melody Festival in this year, whether we want it to or not. You know, I think it certainly has something. Um, Elliot, do you agree with that, or can you see a different outcome? 
I can see this getting top three in the final. I don't think it's because of the song. I do think it's, it is because it's Anders. And like I said, Gus said, he's a huge name and he's backed up his credentials of being a judge and idol. So fair play to him. He's a brilliant singer. The song is just naff for me. Like, like you said, the lyrics are too sickly sweet and it's everything we've heard before. And you know, and I've got to pull this up. If, you know, Bigger Than Us got slated so badly for its lyrics, this is on par with it. Bigger Than The Universe, Bigger Than... They're similar, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. And they were both wrote by Swedes before people jump at me. Um, yeah, this... He's a... Like I said, he's a great singer, but it was just a bit too... Was, yeah, and like, Sean comparing it to The Greatest Showman, I really hate The Greatest Showman, so that's an instant dislike for me. Um, so I don't like it, never liked that film. Um, he's a good singer, but I can see Sweden making a mistake and sending him based on his name. I don't see this song doing well on an international appeal. I still think the song to pick at the minute is Cornelia Jacobs, and I will say that until we hear Anna and Clara and everyone in the semi-final four, but that is the one to be. I think if they pick Anders, it is purely because of his name, and Sweden have fallen into that trap before. Pick the best song. This song lyrically is not the strongest. It doesn't feel... It's heartfelt, but it doesn't feel as emotional compared to Hold Me Closer, and I think that's why I'm saying don't pick this song. Like, he's a good singer. I just can't connect to the song. That's that's what I have to say. And also having Bambi on the backdrop and, and her mother, and like the heart, the tree shaped like a heart with a world in it was all a bit naff and cheap. I'm gonna say it, sorry. It reminded me of when John Lundvik had that moose in his backdrop with Norwegian or whatever his last entry was, when there was just the moose, and I laughed. <laughs> I got the same energy. Thank you, Elliot. <laughs> I think, I just love the backdrop, actually. I think the backdrop's the best backdrop we've seen in Melfest this year so far. I'm going to say it. I think it's really cool. And I think it helped elevate the song. It is a bit uh, sickly sweet. I mean, let's be honest. It's so syrupy and sugary. Uh, Natalie, Natalia Gordienko is hiding in a cupboard so no one would make her sing it. Tom, you get to finish off. <laughs> What's this bigger, biggest, big? Oh, I don't know. James Ashton had to pipe in with his comment didn't he there there we go good to see you in the chat room james thanks for joining us leave any alone anyway tom finish this one off uh do you know what this is the closest i think we've come to seeing a melfest winner since week one of the contest um yes it is sickly, sickly sweet yes it does have syrupy lyrics but the staging was superb um the um showmanship showed by anders was brilliant and um, i think this has potential to win this year's melody festival and whether it's the right song they should be sending is a different question but um i think there will be enough support there and i think he's got enough kind of oomph and backing and things like that to actually um send him all the way um yeah thoroughly enjoyed it and i thought it was a real it was nice to see the show kind of end on a high last night. Mm. Um, and I thought that was absolutely um, brilliant. And just to kind of um, pop up uh, a few things. So um, Jay on uh, YouTube. Anders is a good singer, but the song is crap. That said, every mum on my Facebook feed has posted about their love for him. So he'll prove really dangerous in the final. And I think, yeah. do you know what? That sums it up a lot, doesn't it? The thing is, right? kids if we're looking at the age groups kids between sort of like the age of like three even up to sort of like 13 14 love the greatest showman anything to do with the greatest showman mums and everything love kind of that that greatest showman but also they love that whole kind of vulnerable masculinity kind of thing in which case i think he's got quite a lot of boats sewn, sewn up and i think mm. he's quite dangerous in the final um for that reason um but also let's face it it's an enjoyable listen I enjoyed that last night. It's a good song. Good song. Yeah, and it, I wouldn't be shocked or disappointed if it was Sweden's choice. However, no. I, I think there are a couple of better choices to potentially win Eurovision if Sweden want to win Eurovision. But I take the point. Yeah, poten potentially yes. But let's face it, this is probably going to be top three um, in a few weeks' time. Yeah, Easily. no doubt in my mind either. All right, great. Thank you, panel. That's all seven Melody Festival and songs for Heat 3 done. Uh, Tom, we're back tomorrow night for a very special and delayed 
uh, OMK 2022 preview. Yeah, we've had Dudley, we've had Yenis, we've now got Franklin. Um, but hopefully, frankly, OMK shall be reviewed at uh, half past nine Central European time tomorrow night. Uh, looking forward to seeing all of you guys on there. Fantastic panel of guests lined up as we go through uh, what could be an interesting uh, finish selection. And we'll find out what's lurking in the shadows. We will. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the panel. Uh, firstly, Elliot, thank you for joining. Thank you for having me, guys. I'm now just looking forward to next week with an Anna Bergendahl song by Johnny Gearson and Bobby Lundgren because it's going to be campus hits, I'm sure. Oh, for <laughs> Can't sure. Can't wait. <laughs> no question, and we're going to love it. I know another man who's going to love it. Thank you for joining us tonight, Sean. Oh, yeah, can't wait for Anna. Can't wait. Um, I'll see you next week, probably very hungover, but I'll certainly see you next week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, look, look. Do you see that comment in the chat room? James, you got competition, boy. Huge thank you to Mel. Thanks. I'll see you next week. I'm, ex I'm more excited for Clara Hammerstrom next week. I think she's, well, she's good. She's, she's one of the favourites, isn't she? She's covered last spot, are not she? So, yeah. someone believes in it. I hope she's it, not dressed like a robot again. I still have nightmares <laughs> about that outfit. I don't yeah, think she Maybe it's third time lucky for her. Yeah. We're looking forward to that one. And huge thank you to Gustav. Thanks, Gustav. <laughs> I think I was the nicest person on tonight's show, and I am so surprised about that. Uh, but <laughs> I have to say, it feels good. Thank you. I think there was a, a very clear level of honesty tonight from the panelists no one was holding back on how they were feeling and uh, and i think that echoes what you're seeing on social media right now i think sweden probably get a c minus for last night's heat can do better no doubt will do better and um, finally huge thank you to my co-host as always tom hey another great show steve looking forward to going through emk with you tomorrow night um and then next week Alas, I'm probably not going to be here because I'm probably going to be on a rail replacement bus service somewhere between here and London. Um, such the joys of going to Manchester Cooling on a Saturday night. Does that mean I'm doing the show by myself next week? Me and Mel, me and Mel and uh, Gustav uh, are, the, are the panel for uh, next Sunday, are we? Plus, I could always, I could always be posting responses and send them in. That's fine. That's fine. I'd, I'd be scared that you might hack my little rants to pieces. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Join us tomorrow night for OMK, half nine Central European time. And then on Wednesday, we've got something very special which will launch around lunchtime. So keep an eye open for that. And then join us um, through the week because we've got lots of stuff coming up for you. And of course, we'll be back next Sunday for more of this. Thank you to those in the chat room. Click the like button. Leave us a comment on the channel. Tell us what you thought of tonight's show. Sorry if you were offended. It's all for bants. It's all for fun. Apologies for that. We're just true Eurovision fans. Give you our honest opinion. And hey, if you don't like it, you can unsubscribe. That's all good too. Give us a like. Give us a dislike if you hated it. That's cool too. And until then, have a wonderful week, people. We love you. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye for now. Bye.